Let's take three different beakers. Sorry, two different beakers. But we'll, we'll pour them together to make a third. So two new beakers of water. I know it's a little bit like chemistry class, but you know, this is a topic that pops up again in, uh, in grade 12 chemistry. So there is a little bit of over overlap here. Let's take two new beakers. And this time, I think I'd like to keep them the same mass. So I'll try and draw them the same size. Okay, but I am going to fill them with the same substance. I'm going to put water into both of them. I'm going to put 200 grams into this one and 200 grams into this one. I'm going to make this guy be 50 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to make this guy be 90 degrees Celsius. And again, if I could zoom in on them, I would show a bunch of uh, little particles bouncing around at different speeds. I'm not going to draw them this time, though. And they're going to come together into a larger container. And I know how much water, how much? 400 grams, yeah. Using the idea of thermal energy and temperature, is there anybody that could come up with how much, or sorry, what the temperature would be in this new container? Yeah? Add it and divide, but what are you really finding? Average. Yeah, the average. Right? And if this guy has the same mass as this guy, the average is easy. Just add them up and divide by two. If they weren't the same mass, would it be a little bit trickier? A little bit. Yeah, I think it would sort of swing towards this one. Can the food go away, please? Still put it away. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so 50 plus 90 is 140. Divided by two is 70. And it's just an average, average kinetic energy. So we could say T1 plus T2 divided, sorry. T1 plus T2 divided by two. And that's, that's in a very special case where the masses are equal. So the, aver the weighted average is gonna be equal for both of these guys. Which one has the highest temperature? The second. Second one. Which one has the most thermal energy? Sam? Third one. Yeah, the third, third one. Why would you say it's the third one, Sam? It's got more stuff. It's got more stuff moving around. It's got this stuff moving around, plus it's got this stuff moving around, so the total kinetic energy is going to be more. It's got more stuff moving around. Some at this speed, some at this speed. And maybe the, the speeds average out to make it be 70 degrees Celsius. But the fact there's more stuff makes there be more thermal energy. Let's throw it a, a law. It's the first law of thermodynamics. Yes, sir. Oh, you know what? We're going to get into mixing up all these units in a bit, okay? I promise you. The math will come. These are just some little ideas. So I want to get the little ideas out of the way first. Not, maybe not so little ideas. First law of thermodynamics is don't talk about thermodynamics. <laughs> Spike club.
Okay, so here's the idea. The total thermal energy of a material is equal to its original thermal energy and the heat energy that's either given, to, I should say either given to it by heating it up or the heat energy that's taken from it by cooling it. And there's a real short way to express it as a very simple equation. Hmm? Something to do with an E, I'm sure. No, not equilibrium. No. <laughs> All right, so we could talk about something's total thermal <coughs> total thermal energy final being equal to its initial thermal energy plus the amount of well, you could you could some people use W, some people use Q. I'm going to write Q there for now. For now? For now. Q. Q is the amount of energy that you either give to something or take away from it. EH2 and EH1. Is e uh, plus Q. That's right. EH2 is equal to EH1 plus Q. And what Q is, well, Q is the amount of energy, thermal energy. If it's positive, it's energy given. And if it's negative, <laughs> if it's negative, it's energy given or what? Taken, yeah. And I know I ran out of space there. So you can either give energy or you can take <laughs> away energy. And it actually starts to look kind of like, you know when we did positive work and negative work on objects due to friction? Yeah. It's very similar. You can, you can do negative thermal work on something, and that just means cooling it down. Remember, work is really just a word for the energy that you either gave something or took away from it. And the chemistry folks like to use Q. Now, I think what you're going to find in our textbook is that, it, is that our textbook doesn't use Q so much. It uses change in thermal energy. But it's the same thing. I'm mentioning Q because the chem people use it. But we're going to, in practice, use change in thermal energy more. OK? I know it's not beautiful, but that's life. And really, this comes down to the fact that we're not creating or destroying energy. We're just adding new energy onto our old energy to create to have something that has a new energy. But this energy had to come from somewhere. Usually, it got lost by something else. Actually, always it got lost by something else. 